Hi, I am Lemmy from Mediolotter and today we are going to paint the Dwarven Militia. But first, a few announcements. There are going to be some very special and rich dwarves to begin with. Because I'm going to paint them like they are the citizens of Erebor who went down in Erebor when Smaug came and tried to survive, realized they couldn't and would make a last stand. That's the lore behind them. They're most likely going to be rich because they're dwarves of Erebor. We're going to paint them with different colors, make them stand out from the standard army we're also building. So it's going to be clear those are citizens who just happen to find armor, an axe, helmet, that kind of thing. They picked up their arms and tried to fight off smoke, smoke. For as long as they kept good. So that's the inspiration behind this part of the army. And also some changes have been made thanks to Lawforge. I'll link his Instagram somewhere. I don't know what YouTube allows me to link and whatnot, but I'll try to link him. If it's not in the video itself, it will be in a pinned comment down below. But he told me I would be a fool to take Dane as a main hero, the leader of the army, because you want to have Thror as your main hero for the Arkan Stone, and he has high defense and it makes Dane more able to, yeah, especially on his war pick, uh, to be more mobile, go to places where he's needed and yeah, it made a lot of sense. It's in a comment in the previous video, we also chatted on Instagram, he's a very nice guy. He also gave me the title of the previous video as a... I don't know how to do clickbait, look at all my old videos. And because of his input on the title of the previous video, I also noticed the video is doing amazingly well. And it's the same old content I have been making for the past 7 months or so, so I'm gonna say it's Lawforge. It actually made the video more popular, his title. So I'm gonna try every time before an upload, it's gonna be a couple of days in advance, so more people get the chance to comment. I'll tell about what the video is about and you guys can come up with an idea for the title of the video because I suck at it. Pretty much anyone who's watching this is way better than me. <laughs> so yeah, I was a Karen Games Workshop is a fucking legend for sending that. I am still waiting for the Grim Hammers. They're gonna be here in about give or take 10 days. So I hope by then I can start making the video about how I convert them, show you how it's done. It's not that difficult. But at least for me it was nerve-wracking because I don't want to fuck up my dwarves. I'm also looking for advice and inspiration on something because not only am I trying to build the biggest dwarf army on YouTube, I'm also doing a series that's called Second White Hand. It's a second hand army and it's all just Isengard. So in one of the last videos in that playlist I said I bought about 40 for zero. Urukai for 26 euro or something. Yeah, it's a fuckload of Urukai, but I don't want to make a copy paste I, mean, I don't want everything to look the same. So if you have any tips, tricks, video links, advice or anything for converting Urukai warriors into something a little more dynamic or anything, as long as it doesn't take a lot of skill, because I don't have it, especially with green stuff, that would be amazing. If you have any tips, tricks, please let me know and in the comment down below, you can always reach me on Instagram as well. It's just mini lotter on Instagram. I dropped the Lemmy because uh, we're off to the video now. I'm just gonna show you how I paint, how I painted them different enough to make sure they're definitely Erebor warriors, not Erebor warriors. Fuck. <laughs> how they're not Erebor warriors, but just citizens. And I'm gonna explain to you as you're gonna see it. I'm not gonna show the entire painting scheme. It's gonna be much the same as the previous one with a couple of key differences to make sure they'll stand out enough to make up their own couple of warbands. I think I'm actually gonna have about four warbands of this. And four warbands, all four led by captains uh, of the Erebor warriors. My Grim Hammers, I'm gonna put in the warband of Thror. And Iron Hill warriors with shield and spears are gonna be with Dane. Until I can get some more Iron Hills, but they're fucking expensive. So yeah, 
that will be in a future video. If I buy them, you're gonna see one happy Lammy because I fucking love IMLs. They're amazing. They look fucking awesome, badass. They're amazing in game as far as I've seen. So yeah, so let's go to the desk and paint up some Erebor Militia. Welcome to the desk. I'm gonna start off with the bases. I first use Ashen Grey and I apply it to the base. If I leave some black spots behind, I don't really mind. It's just some extra shading at this point. I'm also gonna show you a couple of ways how I painted them because I want them all to be different. And I'm talking about Erebor Militia here, not the bases itself. The bases are quite uniform for the Militia, so they have one thing that bands them all together. Next up is a pretty heavy dry brush of Mechanica Standard Grey. And I apply quite a bit of force on the brush. You can see the brush also has his best days behind him. And I do this just to make sure it has nice covering. After which I do a lighter dry brush of Dawstone. So you can really see the layers of grey slowly build up. And finally a very very light dry brush of grey sear and I apply it most towards the edges of the base. I am barely touching the base with the bristles and I mostly focus on the outside purely because the more inside you go the closer to the model there's gonna be some more shades just to make it look a little bit more realistic. It's a small little detail but I think it helps. Now they're all based, I started with Baneblade Brown for the first dwarf as a base color for his coat as it is. Uh, yeah, we're gonna call it a coat throughout this video. And of course Baneblade Brown on a black base coat, it's gonna be a nightmare to paint. I did about three layers I believe. Just to make sure I had the coat nice and even, it's a very thin paint. The first layer or two looks like shit, but from the third layer onwards it started to look, uh, well, amazing. And one of the reasons I picked this is because it's a lighter color, it will stand out against the standard warriors, the troops, the backbone of this force. Because I want these guys to stand out. They're, uh, they have a little special place in my heart. Now I use the fang as a highlight color and yeah, I just choose these colors at random. And as a highlight color I mean to highlight some pieces of clothing, especially the edges as you can see right now. The place where the two flaps meet and the stitching goes, that's also painted in the fang. And this I use for all the dwarves in this army, for the little rope uh, to, that keeps their clothes together. I use Karak stone. I really think it's a nice color for just rope. And in the end everything gets a nice wash of null oil, don't matter the color, to make it look a little bit more dirty, like they had to hide in some places where they would usually not come, because these guys are some of the more richer dwarves that got away. Now for the next dwarf, I started with the fang. And thankfully this color didn't need as many coats as the other one as Baneblade Brown. And I really tried my best here to paint thin layers to make it look as smooth as possible to make sure it, it looks the part. These are some very fancy dwarves and they chose not to wear the colors of their warriors but the colors of their house or just whatever the fuck they were wearing when Smaug attacked. And as an homage to the old old school Erebor Warriors I painted in one of my first videos, I used Temple Card Blue. And I really think this goes very well together. And of course the Grim Hammers I'm gonna use for this army do have Temple Card Blue. Now Morfang Brown as a base for this warrior, this Militia Warrior I should say. 
next up some easy deserts and we paint the cloth underneath his coat just to make it stand out a little bit plus it's another homage to the OG old school Arabot dwarves I painted their boots in this color it's a little bit brownish yellowish ochre and I really liked the look of them so another homage to the old video and as a highlight color for this one I chose Dollstone because I wanted to use Dollstone. I'm not gonna say for I used it for any fancy pants reasons. This is just I paint whatever the fuck I first grabbed actually. There's no rhyme, no reason. If it c looks good, it's purely by accident. I'm not great at color coding or anything. And I also wanted to experiment a little bit, have a little bit of fun with, with these. Contour blue for this Dwarven Spearman. Don't know if you can hear that, but my cat has the zoomies, which is great. And thankfully Contour blue is way better to paint on a black base coat. I didn't need to paint the this whole part three or four times in a row. With one, maybe two smooth layers. I painted this one up. I'm also not showing how I painted the entire model because it would be boring. I've shown you a couple of times already on this channel how I paint my dwarves. And especially in the previous video which has been very popular I have noticed. And we use paint blade brown for this one's highlights. And once again it's not by any fancy pants choice or anything. I, I don't even think it just look, goes amazing together, I just, I paint the color up and I just randomly pick. And just like that, we have some nice and painted Erebor Militia Warriors. This was a lot of fun to paint and a nice way to experiment and have a lot of fun with the hobby, which is very important if you ask me. And especially with dwarves, they hold a special place in my heart. I absolutely love painting them. The detail on these sculpts is amazing, as you can probably see. I highly recommend doing something like this, because if you convert your troops you don't want to waste a lot of them. And thanks again to Love Forge. Uh, the little conversation we had was the spark I needed to make this little series I'm doing to start off the biggest YouTube Dwarf Army and Middle-Earth strategy battle game. My wallet is not as happy as I am right now. Because guess what happened? The day that I'm doing this voiceover, I got the delivery. Don't know if you can hear that, but those are Dwarf Warriors. To be exact, the Grimhammers have arrived. So I can finally start recording how I convert them. Then I can paint more dwarves and it's gonna be amazing. And I'm planning on making that my next video, so stay tuned. This is the start of something, well, big, I suppose. It's supposed to get big with time. And with the holidays in sight, I might get some more dwarves. Uh, it's definitely on the wish list. I don't have about 300 euro worth of dwarves in my basket waiting for a miracle to happen to me, so I can buy them without my wife killing me. <laughs> so yeah, this is enough ranting. Hope to see you in the next video where I convert to Erebor Warriors. If you liked this video, please leave a like, leave a comment, say whatever the fuck you want, share it with your grandmother, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Stash is constantly in my fucking mouth. <coughs> Excuse you. It's... Uh, what the fuck is my cat doing? She's trying to bury her face in the... Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Well, what the fuck was I saying? Yeah, so... <coughs> Excuse you. Hey. Yeah.